I recently had a customer who was interested in getting this aluminum furnace going again. He's wanting to melt down some scrap aluminum and he wants to run it on waste oil. So today what we're going to do is take a look at a piece of equipment that I built for Joel. What's going on fellas? We're back out here at White Sands again and today we're going to see how this piece of equipment reacts to freezing cold temperatures. This particular unit does have a tethered control box to keep you out of the sparks and all that kind of stuff and away from the hot furnace. So, let's see what we got going on here. I'm gonna be using some really dirty waste oil, but it is freezing cold outside. We have a, a bilge pump and a preheater here to warm the oil up just a little bit. The unit itself does have an oil preheater but it's only pushing about 107 watts with this much extension cord on it. So I don't want to be pumping 30 degree oil into this thing. Okay, so as you can see, the oil is spraying out in like a needle-like fashion. And that also made it take about 20 seconds longer than I would like to get it lit. I spared you guys those couple of moments. You can take a look at it at the end of the video, but that's attributed to this extremely cold oil and the preheater not having a chance to get things heated up yet. So, that's definitely a thing. Okay, I just got the light. I think I'm just going to leave it alone and let it heat up a minute before I do anything drastic. The cold oil is definitely an issue. Alright, I got good news. I just realized the preheater's been off this whole time, so we've been running cold oil it's only being heated by that first heater i'm about to lose it it looks like if i don't do something fast so it ought to start running better this thing was cold as a duck it still is so i also noticed that the cold air is just kind of quenching all the heating efforts that are taking place the pump itself is heating that oil up to 200 degrees. You can see here, this is from when we first tried to start it. There was some residual fuel in there. I had a feeling that there was, so I'm kind of dumping it. I just, I kind of felt like there was. I sprayed a little bit of oil before I got it to light, and um, just kind of giving it a dump there to burn some of that excess out. It doesn't do that the next bump test that I do. I tip it just to kind of see if there's anything inside there accumulating and this was just from when I first tried to light it and the oil was still really cold. If that oil is not at least 130 degrees it's not going to atomize properly with these kinds of nozzles. Here it is at a higher air level. It's the same fuel input we just got the air on higher and this thing is screaming pretty good. Now typically you would want to use a centrifugal separator to filter your oil when using this type of equipment. Here's kind of a look at the settings that we got. You can see I had that air turned up quite a bit. Uh, you can turn the air up full blast and not blow it out, which is a pretty good sign that the design is, is doing what it should be. So the only thing I'm concerned about is how cold the oil is. It's not working well. I know we see a flame coming out of this thing, but it's not passing the test in my opinion. So for conditions old, I feel like we're going to want the 300 watt heating element. This one here is pushing 107 on this long extension cord. Here's a look at our oil. I dumped some more really cold, thick oil in there. Um, everything's heating up good. It's running okay, but I know it can do better. And the startup was really tough. I didn't like the startup, and I don't want to trouble the customer, so I think we'd be well advised to do some fine tuning. We're going to um, go up to the 300 watt preheater because, and I think also we might want to insulate some of these lines if we're going to be running this thing in cold weather because my pump's at 200 degrees. That's plenty of uh, preheat right there just from, from the bypass of that fluid going from the discharge to the intake. So, I mean, I know it looks like it's running great and all, but I can tell that it can do better and I'm worried about the oil not atomizing as good as it could and we need this most the best performance we can get out of waste oil systems because of how dirty they burn you know so you can see here we did another uh bump dump 
everything seemed okay. I'm just not, I shouldn't be able to touch any of this stuff with my bare hand, these oil lines. It's just a little colder than we want it. You want it to be around 130 degrees, which is kind of like scalding hot water coming out of your faucet. You can just barely touch it. And those little sparks you see are just waste oil ash. Waste oil is an extremely dirty fuel. It has dirt, carbon, and all kinds of crap in it. Little tiny pieces of metal from the engine pieces of gasket all that stuff so here it is on extremely low fuel very high air um, it has a very broad turn down ratio I still just think it could do much better and we're gonna have to figure out uh, whether or not we want to put some socks over some of these lines cover them up a little bit get a little insulation on that preheater and everything for this type of cold weather the customer may not ever plan on using it in weather this cold. I don't know yet. We'll check into that. Alright, so here's the ignition process. The first time I've ever lit this thing. It's extremely cold outside and events like this make me question whether or not it's practical to do the ignition on waste oil. Might be better to do it with some diesel or some waste oil that has a strong cut of diesel just for the ignition process. This particular batch of waste oil does have a little bit of diesel in it that I use to clean some stuff up. You can see here we're getting a needle jet of fluid flying out of that flame. That tells us that we are not atomizing the fuel. That's what these uh, nozzles do when they're not undergoing atomization. We're getting a little bit but not much. There's still a center core a column of fuel spraying out of there in the form of a rod. So that tells me it's too cold, the equipment's too cold, but again, we're just starting it up. And I didn't know this, but the freaking preheater isn't even on. The only preheat we have is the preliminary preheater that I connected to that bilge pump because we can't elevate our tank this high. Usually you would want your fuel tank above the burner a little bit. But in this case, we're just going to use this bilge pump. And the customer is going to want to be mounting this on that side of that furnace anyway. It's going to have a tri-clamp mount system. So I do get it lit, but because of the freezing cold temperatures, it's, it's kind of difficult. So if I would have had the preheat turned on, this wouldn't have been this bad. So that's mistake number one. So tomorrow when I test again, I'm gonna to remember to turn on the preheat and let it sit there for a second. And I think we need to go with the 300 watt preheater, especially if we're gonna be working in conditions like this. This is just uh, a little much. Waste oil has, has its perks, but there's also reasons why everybody ain't doing it. You really gotta, dot your I's and cross your T's when you're going to be running this stuff. Typically you would also want to always use a centrifugal filtering system. You don't want to be even using any type of screens or paper filter setups. You need the centrifugal filters to clean this stuff up to a usable consistency for these types of nozzles. Or else you're going to be taking it apart and cleaning it all the time. We're going to take this one apart after testing is done to take a look at the accumulation. So that's what I got today, fellas. Uh, Joel, I'm gonna do some extra work to this thing for you. I think we need to wrap those lines up in some fiberglass exhaust tape to kind of keep them warm in this weather because I'm losing more heat than I'm putting out on the pump and the preheater. But uh, it's working, it ignited with the spark on waste oil. But I wanna give this thing one more test and get it dialed in to work better. I'm not happy with that start at all. We failed the preliminary test, so we're going to do some retooling and get back at you.